Hello, this is Joe, and here I am with a, hopefully the beginning of a series of tips for using Blender and other 3D modeling tools for making good models for home 3D printing. But before I talk about some specific tricks and some specific tools, I want to talk in general about some of the rules you need to know to be able to do this well. The first thing that you need to understand is about overhangs and supports. See, the fancy, the fancy 3D printers, when they print things, they can print something of any shape, of any orientation, however that they want. It doesn't matter if what they're printing is suspended in air or flipped on its side. It doesn't matter to them because they have really strong supports. But on the cheaper home 3D printers that are uh, much more accessible, you have to be a little bit careful about way, the way that you design things. When I started modeling, things like what you're seeing right here with the Cthulhu model, um, I knew these rules and I worked them into it and I wanted to show you that it is possible to get very good and robust models from 3D printing, uh, from home 3D printers. This prints without any supports. It prints just fine and it's cute. And people love it. People love this little Cthulhu monster. But it works because I know the the rules. And the rules are easy to remember if you just remember these three letters. Y, H, and T. The letter Y over here works because when it starts printing... Well, let's, let's zoom in on this thing real fast. When it starts printing... I've got a simulated printer here. There we go. There's my simulated printer. It's printing fine, and the next layer prints, and it's got something to print on. And it's okay up until this point, right? Well, at this point, it starts moving outward. And a little bit of an overhang, a th uh, home 3D printer can actually do, because it's printing the layers kind of over on the next layer. Okay. So there we go, it prints up and it's fine. So Y actually works because it's a gradual overhang. And the rule is generally you don't want to go over 45 degrees. Depending on certain things, you can sometimes push that. But the general rule is about 45 degrees. And if we go back to the little cute Cthulhu monster here, you'll notice that the overhangs are all designed to be fairly gradual. Even the, even the spikes on the back they don't go more than about 45 degrees. This curve starts about 45 degrees. So, uh, let's see if I can figure this out here. Yeah, there we go. How do I erase? There we go. So, these curves here, generally just, you know, nice little 45 degree curves. Nothing in here, nothing in here. There's one part, actually. The arms here, if we zoom in, that might be a little bit more than 45 degrees, but we get away with it. So, Y is the first rule. The second one is H. Let's talk about H for a second. Now, H works, but for a different reason. So here we go, we're 3D printing it, it's coming up, and then it gets to this part. When it prints this layer right here, you'll notice there's nothing underneath this. It's not being supported. And that could be very bad, except as it prints the little noodle, as it starts from over here and then comes over here, it has a place to attach that noodle to the other side. And so it can bridge that distance. So bridging is actually perfectly fine for 3D printing. To a certain degree, depending on how hot your filament is and how hot your print area is and a lot of different factors, you might not be able to bridge very well. So use bridging, and bridging is fine. It works. As it builds up, it'll build better layers. But use bridging sparingly. Like I said, it'll work. It's fine. But be a little bit careful with it. The next one is T. Let's take a look at the letter T. The letter T is an interesting example, and, and take a look at this. Do you think it's going to print well? Well, let's do our virtual 3D printer here. Printing up, printing up, fine. Everything's stacking on top of each other, it's fine, but then it comes to here. What happens when it gets to this layer? 
it draws that noodle out, goes across, comes back. What's that noodle going to do? It's sitting in mid-air. It's going to droop before it reattaches. Now, surprisingly, you can actually get away with a lot of this sort of overhang. You can let it droop, and it'll build onto its droop, and eventually it'll straighten it up. But if you're going for something precise, if you need something to actually work, you can't do this. Generally, if you turn on support, something with a flat bottom like this will support okay. But generally speaking, you want to design for things to work without supports, because supports are just messy. Supports on the home 3D printers are made of the same material that you're printing with. And you don't want to have to clean that off because it might not come off cleanly. I, I, I know, people brag about how good their supports are and things like that. I've never met a support that I liked. I've met a support that I've used because I had to, but I've never met a support that I like. And whenever I can, you avoid strong overhangs like T. Now there's another case that's even worse, and that's nice serif T like this. Knowing what you know already, thinking about printing it layer by layer, what's going to happen when you print this? Can you see it? Let's do it. So, start printing up. Fine, no problem. We're going good. Whoa, what happened here? What happened here is it's going to try and print these areas. But having nothing to attach to, floating in mid-air like that, they're going to fail. They're, the, the plastic is going to come out of the extruder nozzle and literally just dangle there until it tries to draw somewhere else and it's just going to rub that noodle off on somewhere else. It's going to be an ugly, ugly mess. And it's going to keep on being an ugly mess until it gets to here. And you might think, oh, well, there's bridging. Yeah, but the bridge has nothing to attach to on this side. Ugly mess, ugly mess. It might clean itself up before the top layer. It might not. Actually, I did 3D print all of these shapes, and you can see pictures of them in my book, 3D Printing Blueprints, where I actually go over all these rules and more. I'm not going to lie to you. These videos are a little bit in service of this book. If you like learning this stuff, this book is a good source for it. But that's all the plug-in I'm going to do in this video. Let's get back to the tutorial. I want to show you an example of good design and bad design. Here we have a wizard. Same wizard-ish, right? And a lot of the same elements, but this one's posed differently than that one. This one right here, you might think, oh, he's got a great pose. He's got a great dynamic. I mean, you look at that wizard and you know you shall not pass. That is a great wizard right there. The problem is it's a lousy 3D print. I mean, look at this thing as it comes up. This part's not going to print well. It's going to need to be supported. And trust me, I tried this wizard with five different kinds of supports and I could not make him work. This arm, he's dangling out to it. This guy? No, I, I, actually, I'm, I'm pointing with my mouse. I should go like this. Bad, bad, even worse. Once we get to here, it's fine. And then once we get in here, yeah, that's bad too right there. That's bad too right there. I mean, this thing is just just absolutely lousy with badness. And as good a pose as this is, and as pretty a pose as this is, maybe it would be better to do something a bit more like this. Yes, the pose isn't as pretty, and it isn't as dramatic, but it will print successfully. In fact, even the hat prints fairly successfully on a home 3D printer because it's anchored to the shoulder here. It's got a little bit of you know, fudging on it, but it actually clears itself up after only a couple of layers. Nobody ever notices that the hat doesn't quite print well. The arm is in, it's tucked into the, to the gown there, so it comes off at a nice little 45 degree angle there. I mean, it's great. This is a, this is a great pose and it works well. The, uh, the belt has been tied right into there, so it doesn't bother anything. This is a great 3D pose. Good one, bad one. So sometimes in making things for home 3D printing, you have to do in service to this. Now there's one other thing I would like to talk about, and that is wall thickness. Now in Blender, which I'm going to be doing all of my tutorials in, and I defend my choice for using Blender in my book, so if you want to know why I say Blender, for the most part, the argument breaks down to the price is right, 
and it does everything that you need. There are other tools that do it better, but none of them that do all of the things that Blender needs. So if you want to do something, Blender is a tool to do it. I want to talk about wall thickness, okay? Pull up the uh, properties menu here. This is a cube, and we're going to make this cube, uh, actually, let's do it this way so that when I resize it, it's going to be a, a 10 by 10 wall, but how thin can we make this wall? Well, for most home 3D printers, they have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which means technically, right, you could do a single line thickness wall, but most slicers won't even look at this wall. It just won't work for them. You have to have at least 0.8, which is almost a millimeter. But here's the thing. You don't want a one millimeter wall. You want it 0.8. Why? Because at 0.8, it will do a line up, and align back down and they will be right next to each other and they will fuse together and make a nice wall. However, with a one millimeter wall, it'll do one wall up and one wall down. And if you're doing more than one shell, which most of the time you're going to be doing, it will, in its calculation, say, okay, now I need to go back up and back down again for my second wall. And there's not enough room in there for my 0.4 millimeter nozzle so I'm going to give up and not even try. And it doesn't even try and fill that area in with your infill or anything. Those two walls remain separate. And you're going to find yourself with two single walls that will not be touching each other. And they will separate. This is a problem up until about 1.6 millimeters. At 1.6 millimeters, you have enough room to go up and back, up and back. And have all four of those walls touching each other and it's happy. And so that's good. 0.8, good. 0.16, good. In between there is kind of this weird area where it's probably not going to work for you. Now this is kind of an advanced trick and it's one of those things that you learn the more 3D printing that you do. But you need to kind of watch out for spaces in your 3D prints that are between 0.8 and 0.16 millimeters because you're going to end up with strange gaps and you're going to wonder why well I'm telling you why because the math involved in drawing walls can't figure out what to do with something between 0.8 and 0.16 because halfway in between it just kind of goes uh now nah, I give up and you get two walls of slightly different so 0.12 bad 0.1 bad 0.8 good so as you're designing things, keep these rules in mind. Let's go back and review. YHT. Y, good. H, good. T, uh-uh. Don't do T. T is bad. And especially, don't do a nice serif T like this with overhangs. Okay, I have to say, if you're actually printing Y, H, and T, if you just took them, <clears throat> Excuse me. If you just took these letters and laid them down on the build platform like that, they would print just fine. So, yes, this is an academic discussion, and the rules of YHT are just there in service of helping you remember 45 degree overhangs, bridging, good, but what large overhangs, not so good. Serifs, bad. And if you stick to these rules, you can do cute and very elegant prints. And then also remembering that 0.8 millimeters good, 0.16 millimeters not so good, or 0.16 millimeters is good, but anything in between not so good, try and stay away from it. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something. I hope this is useful to you. And I hope that this is going to be the beginning of a series. So if you like it, I, I hate saying this. But subscribe, because I'll have more of these coming. Also, you can check out my blog. The address has been down here the whole time. Uh, Joe's 3D Workbench at blog.blogspot.com, where I post all sorts of 3D printing adventures and tips and cool things that you can do and cool things that I'm doing. And if you want to get in contact with me, that's the place to do it. So hit up my blog, subscribe, and Leave a comment if you liked what you see. And if there is a segment that you want me to talk about, if there's a trick or something that you want me to talk about in the future, then uh, contact me.
blog's the best place to do that. Or, no, leave a comment in this video, also a good place to do that. And I will talk to you later. Thank you very much.